Welcome to the podcast where we explore the opportunities, challenges, and anxieties that technical professionals and techpreneurs face when building their career, building their products, and building their business. This show is about the people behind technology and the mindsets and skill sets that they developed that led to their success. You can learn more about this podcast and our guests at hellotechpros.com and about overcoming social anxiety at anxietynerd.com. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to bring you back another episode talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is managing software developers. Now, as you've probably heard on one of my earlier episodes, um, I started my career in software development, and it was a long time before I actually took the plunge into leadership, being a team lead, and then finally into nothing but management, nothing but uh, full-time management. I haven't actually written any code in a long time, not professionally. I've tinkered around at home a little bit every now and then on hobby projects but professionally writing code has been almost a decade now. Um, and that's because uh, those who can't do teach <laughs> and those who really can't do manage. Uh, no, but seriously, it's, it's, uh, it's been such a blessing to me to uh, move into the field of leadership. I don't really like it called management um, because management is, to me, it's all about the paperwork and the timesheets and the bureaucracy and all the crap that goes with it. But the leadership of leading software development teams is so fulfilling because I love software developers. I love software development. I love development projects. I love seeing a product come together um, where there was just an idea written down on a whiteboard somewhere or on a piece of paper or on a JIRA card. And to see that come together is fascinating and just so cool to me. It always has been. Um, but the best part about it is leading the people who actually do the hard work and the heavy lifting of software development. Um, in, if you are not a software development manager, how is this episode going to be relatable to you? Well, uh, this episode is going to be about what developers are really saying when they say, something there's a few key phrases here that we're gonna we're gonna pick on we're not picking on software developers but we're gonna pick on these phrases so if you're not managing software developers it's okay this might be applicable to you in your technology professional career when you work with other developers maybe you're a product manager maybe you're a scrum master maybe you're uh, a QA analyst um, maybe you work in uh, DevOps or deployment or uh, system admin. Um, so no matter what career you're in, if you're in the if you're in the IT industry and you work with software developers, this is going to be applicable to you. Or if you are an entrepreneur, I know a lot of entrepreneurs listen to Hello Tech Pros. And if you're an entrepreneur and you've ever thought about launching your own software product, launching a website, building a, a mobile application, building a software as a service application. Uh, this episode is going to be very critical for you because what we're going to be talking about today is the things that your software developers are really saying when they say these few phrases or sentences. So you ask them something, they give you some feedback, and on the surface level, it sounds pretty straightforward, but we're going to give you some tips and tricks to really dive in and understand what they're really saying. So the first one that I want to that I want to mention here is the phrase it's going to take x number of hours to complete. It's going to take x time to complete. Um, when when a software developer says this, um, let's just say uh, I don't know. We we've asked our developer Amy to uh, develop some code for us, and and she says, yeah, sure, I can build that feature for you, Chad. It's going to take eighty hours to complete. So. I'm not picking on Amy. <laughs> We're not going to pick on Amy. But what we want to do is really clarify what she means by 80 hours. Because in my head, when I hear that, when I first heard that over the course of my career, and, and I've been you know, on the other side of this equation too, right? I've been the software developer who was providing these estimates. Um, I, what I want to do is ask that former chat or ask that Amy, okay, what do you mean by that, Amy? 80 hours to complete. What what does that entail? What all are you, what is what assumptions go into that? Um, so what we're looking for is if that is 
uh, well, hang on, I'm kind of rambling here. What's the, the, the estimate part of that, the 80 hours? Okay, so is that perfect world scenario? right? So Amy has her headphones on. She is in the zone. She has no interruptions. Chad has not bothered her or picked on her all day for two whole weeks. Um, she's not worried about uh, getting pulled into meetings. She's not worried about giving status updates. She's not worried about um, personal stuff that's going on with her life, right? She's got her car in the shop and she's waiting on those phone calls from uh, from the mechanic to find out what their estimate is on how much her car is going to cost to repair, right? So is this a perfect world scenario where Amy gives you the 80 hours to complete estimate that is not realistic because unfortunately we don't live in the perfect world. We live in a world where there are meetings and there are breaks and there are interruptions and there are, gosh, just brain freezes, right? And, and um, we need to account for the duration of the work that's actually going to take place, right? So the estimate is good. It would take 80 hours to complete, but is the duration 80 hours? In other words, are we gonna have this feature complete in two solid weeks? So what happened in the past was I would go to a developer and I would say, hey, Amy, uh, how fast uh, or how long is it gonna take? And she'd say, oh, this is about an 80 hour job. And I'm like, perfect. And so if I ask this on Monday, in my head, I'm thinking by the end of the day, two Fridays from now, I talk to Amy and we're good. And so I would come back two Fridays from now and say, hey, Amy, where's where's the code? Where's the product? Where's the feature? She's like, Psh. yeah, I've, I've started on it. I'm working on it, but it's not done. I'm like, oh, okay, well, how much longer do you need? And I'm thinking maybe by over the weekend, if she put in a couple hours or stay late tonight, or, uh, you know, I'm a nice, I'm a nice boss. I'm not a boss. I'm a manager and I'm not a manager. I'm a leader. So, okay, sure. You need Monday to finish it. She's like, well, Monday, I might be able to get, start working on the user interface. And I'd be like, whoa, hold the phone. What do you mean? Start working on the user interface? Well, I'm still working on the back end. What? what happened to your 80 hour estimate? Oh, well, I've only put like, 15 hours on it so far. What do you mean you only put 15 hours on it so far? I've given you two whole weeks. Yeah, but a lot of other stuff, Chad. Not just the interruptions, not just you know going back and forth to status meetings, but maybe I'm uh, tied up with the other projects, right? Maybe I've got a lot of things on my plate. Maybe you've asked me to do four or five other things that I'm trying to juggle all at the same time. Maybe I've got multiple stakeholders. Maybe you're not my only product manager giving me tasks. Maybe I've got a backlog of production issues that I've been working on. So that's one issue. Are we talking about the effort, the number of hours of effort that it will take to get this complete? Or are we talking about the duration it's going to take to complete this item? Very, very strong point. If you're a software developer or forget software development, if you are anything in a technical field where the, the time frame is variable of, of how long something is going to take. If you're the mechanic, right? You're the mechanic and you tell Amy, hey, Amy, this is going to take four hours to, to repair your car. And she's like, great, perfect. I'll be there at 5 p.m. and pick it up. And then she comes at 5 p.m. She gets there at 5.30 uh, her Uber drops her off and she doesn't have a car ready. Why? Because they have a backlog of eight cars in front of her or the guy who started working on it, started working on it. And now he's waiting for a part and the part's going to take till Tuesday before it gets in, right? That's information that Amy needed to know, to know when to expect her car. So are we talking about the estimate of actual work or are we talking about the duration that it's going to take to complete the job? Now, the next piece I want to talk about is the phrase complete the job. What do, we, what do we mean when we say complete the job, right? So probably depends on who you ask and what, uh, what their roles and responsibilities are. And as a, a person doing the asking or the person that's, that's managing the product, what are my expectations? When I say, how long is it going to take to finish this, finish this project. And Amy says, okay, well, now that we've cleared up the air about the estimate, the, 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 the level of effort, the number of hours for the effort versus the duration. Um, and you know, the duration is going to be variable, but 
you right. We we know that if we can really get my time nailed down and and get the distractions away, then I can do a better job of providing you a an estimate that has a duration component to there. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna be complete. Whatever. Say you say another week from now. Perfect. Okay, you're gonna be done another week from now. So I come back another week from now and I talk to Amy and I say, all right, Amy, let's see what you got. And she shows it to me and it's in a dev environment and it, and it works kinda, but it's only the happy path and it's not in production. Um, it's not scheduled to be in production. It hasn't been built. There's no unit tests around it. There's no um, documentation it's not done to me as a product owner it's not done right what's our definition of done so when we're talking in in agile methodologies in in scrum frameworks um, there is a concept of a definition of done and when you're working even if you're working outside of an agile or scrum environment even if you're not working with software developers it is very very important to upfront before the work starts happening to get that definition of done very clear, get it on paper, get it out in front of people, talk about it, get some agreement on it. What does done mean? Does done mean, well, it works on my machine. I got it to compile. Yay, I finally finished that algorithm and I got it to compile. That's awesome. Is it done? No, <laughs> there's no unit tests. Um, there's no documentation. I haven't, I haven't run all the test cases through it. I've only used five sample um, pieces of data to test it with. I haven't run it against like production or near production data. Um, I haven't uh, had QA check it off. I haven't scheduled it to be deployed to any environments except my own desktop. It hasn't even gone to a shared development environment, let alone a uh, QA environment or a user acceptance test environment. It only works locally. That's not done. To me, that's not done. Now, maybe in your environment, that means done. Perfect. That's all we needed. For that proof of concept, that was all we needed, was to have it running locally on Amy's machine. But if the mechanic told Amy, hey, Amy, your job's done. I, I fixed the thing. And he fixed the thing, but he hasn't reassembled, right? Maybe he was fixing the transmission. He fixed the transmission but now he's got to do a lot of work of like reassembling all the other parts, you know, that go around the transmission that he had to take out in order to get the transmission done. She could, oh man, she's going to be so frustrated. She keeps going back to the mechanic and saying, okay, I'm ready to pick up my car. He's like, whoa, 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 hang on. <laughs> There's pieces all over the whole bay, right? And she's so frustrated because she says, I thought the job was done. Well, yeah, I got the transmission to work. That was the problem, right? So... It's done. That hard part that you asked about, the difficult part of making the repair, that's done. All we got to do now is put it back together. That's easy. That's not hard. That's easy. Okay, well, how long is it going to take? Oh, you know, another two hours, six hours, two days, whatever it is. And that's when you hear that in any situation, whether you're picking up your car or you're getting a deliverable from a software developer, that can be extremely frustrating because done means done. It means I'm ready to pay the bill and put my key in the ignition and start it up and it runs and I can drive away and get on the highway and be completely safe and have no more problems and everything is put back together the way it's supposed to be. Right? And in the software development industry, it is well, the, the definition of done is variable, but you need to have that definition laid out before you um, before you get working on it. Okay, so the next phrase that I want to cover is the phrase, that's not possible. Have you ever heard somebody tell you this? And you just look at them like, there's got to be a way. There has to be a way. So let's have another fictional character. Uh, we'll call him Derek. And you go up to Derek and you say, Derek, um, what I want you to do is take this thing that I've seen in this other application, right? I played around with this other application. Uh, maybe it's a competitor application or maybe it's uh, an app that I have on my iPhone or maybe it's uh, something I saw in a movie. And I said, man, that would be awesome. I want to use that in our software, in our company software, in my pet project software, in my whatever it is. And you say, 
Derek, can you please implement that? Because that would be awesome, and I know our clients would love it, our executives would love it, uh, the team would love it. It'd be fantastic. And Derek says, nope, Chad, that's not possible. So what does Derek mean? Well, a couple of things. He could mean it's literally not possible, meaning like, dude, you went out and watched a science fiction movie, and obviously you don't know how <laughs> how the science works or the fiction works. Right? You, you can't tell them apart. They're blended together, and you don't know the difference between the science and the fiction. It is literally not possible. Or it may be that Derek doesn't fully understand the problem that you're trying to solve. Right? I've seen a lot of people struggle with comprehending the idea that someone else is trying to explain to them. Right, And they say, wouldn't it be great if we had a widget that did such and such? And the business problem they, that they explain and the ideas around uh, the technology is not articulated well enough for the recipient to build that same mental model to understand exactly what they're talking about. And so instead of saying, I don't understand, could you tell me more? Can you give me some examples? Let's whiteboard it. I've seen a lot of people say, yeah, that's not possible. That's not gonna work. Yeah, that's not gonna work because of X, Y, Z, right? And then they start justifying it and they start giving you reasons. That's not gonna work because that technology doesn't work that way. That's not gonna work because it's not designed to do that. It's not gonna work because it's a horrible idea. It will fail at scale. That's not gonna work because I tried it before when I was in college and it blew up. Right? There's a lot of justification that I hear from people. And again, this is, I, I hear it all the time in the software development industry, but this is also applicable in many other fields. I, I see it in, um, Gosh, I've seen it in in the arts industry. My wife is a uh, is is a hobbyist uh, artist and a scrapbooker, right? She does paper crafts, and I've heard some of her friends and some of the people that she kind of does her hobby with say, "Oh, that's not possible. There's no way you can make that." And she goes, "Hmm, I wonder." And I can see the little wheels ticking inside of her mind, and she figures it out, right? Because she has this curiosity. There's got to be a way. But first of all, she's curious about what is it that they're trying to solve? What problem are they trying to solve in papercraft? What exactly are they trying to get done? Is it a particular type of folding or a particular type of you know, distressing of the paper or the way that they're, I don't know, gluing multiple pages on top of each other? I don't really understand what they do. But the point is, I hear this a lot in a lot of different places. It's not possible. And one reason people say that is that they don't really understand the problem that's being communicated to them, right? Maybe the maybe the speaker um, is having a hard time articulate it, articulating it. <laughs> maybe you can't pronounce words. <laughs> sometimes that happens. Uh, yeah, sometimes we are not communicating effectively. That's that's leading into it, right? And maybe it's not the recipient's problem. Maybe it's the um, the requester's problem, right? They're not communicating effectively. They're so excited. I do this all the time. I'm so guilty of this all the time. I get fired up and amped up about some great idea. And I just want everybody to love it. And so I start rambling about it. And I go on and on and on for like 45 minutes. And people look at me and go, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. In other words, they're saying, that's not possible. I'm not going to help you with that because I don't believe it's possible. And that's my bad because I'm not taking my time to slow down, whew, taking a deep breath, thinking about what it, what it is that I want to happen, what it is that I want to happen, um, how I want it to happen, and which portions or parts of it I think are applicable to um, add to my software development project or my board game I'm designing or my paper craft idea that I would like to see my wife do, right? A lot of times it's it's my communication problem. Sometimes when you see somebody say it's not possible, it's just really because they don't have the training or experience to find a solution in that area. All right? Again, we're not picking on people. We're not picking on Derek, our our uh, our fake person here. We're not picking on him. Um, 
we just know, or maybe it's a possibility that Derek hasn't had enough experience in that area to be able to believe it's possible. He's never seen it before. So to him, it is science fiction, but he hasn't read the blog or uh, gone through the um, tutorial right, to be able to know that it is possible. Maybe he hasn't seen a demonstration of it at a user conference. Right? Maybe he just doesn't know. And he's just like, yep, I've never seen it before. Nobody else is doing it. Therefore, it's not possible. If Google's not doing it, if Apple's not doing it, if Netflix is not doing it, if Cisco's not doing it, it's not possible. If Uber's not doing it, McDonald's is not doing it, it ain't possible, right? And that may be because Derek has a limited experience set. He has a limited amount of training and he just doesn't know. And so what we need to do is enlighten him, right? Show him examples. No, literally, dude, check this out. Watch this YouTube video. It's not smoke and mirrors. They literally did that. Let's bring it into ours, right? And now once you've enlightened him and shown that it is possible, hopefully Derek's going to be the curious kind of person who's like, oh, wow, I wonder how they did that. Let me do some research. Do that research and, and figure it out. A fourth reason why Derek could say it's not possible is because Derek doesn't have the right tools. Maybe the tools that are required to do that job are outside of his tool chest, right? He is a, whatever, let's say that he's a back-end service developer, right? And he doesn't know anything about um, JavaScript, Angular development, CSS, um, uh, Objective C. Um, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't know a lot of different front end technologies. And so when he hears about something, he says that's not possible. What that means is that's not possible for him in his role with his tool sets. Right? He might even have seen the training. He might even have some experience at uh, a prior job or or working at home. But he might not have the tools at work to get that done to get that complete. That's not possible because. This environment kind of sucks <laughs> to solve that problem. This environment is not conducive to solve that problem. We don't have the right tools. We don't have the right methodology. We don't have the right process. We don't have the right budget, right? Um, which leads into the next one. It's too costly or too time consuming, right? There may be a lot of um, constraints or restrictions placed on Derek in the environment that he works in where he knows that solving this problem is absolutely doable, but it's going to take either five years or a whole bunch of capital to bring in a whole team of engineers, like lots and lots of different teams of engineers to solve that problem. There's no pre-built framework, frameworks that you could bring together. You know, there's no off the shelf um, tool sets that Derek could um, get a license for and, and build out. Right? He's going to have to build it all from scratch. And that means bringing in a whole bunch of people to work on it. Or that means him working on it dedicated full time for the next five years. And it's just too costly and time consuming. So when Derek says it's not possible, Derek means I can't do it on my own. I'm going to need some help. You're going to have to give me some time. You're going to have to give me some budget. You're going to have to give me some other developers around here to solve. The last one, the last excuse excuse or not excuse really the last reason why Derek would say that it's not possible is because we're just the wrong organization to tackle that problem that problem might be too big for us to handle um, we, we mentioned I mentioned uh, processes right you might not have the processes to do it um, that could stem from it, that's that's a whole diff different industry right we are um, you know, we're, we are a purveyor of books. We sell books. We sell used books. We, we should not be in the business of building core foundational, like things to replace Linux, like operating systems. Like that's not our business model. We should not be doing that. That is not possible for a used bookstore to be doing. Now, could our business model shift? Yeah, sure. I mean, look at Amazon, look at what they did of <laughs> selling used books and new books and all kinds of things. And then they decided to, you know, become what it is today, right? We run 
a big part of the cloud, all the cloud computing stuff on AWS. But for this particular organization that our, our fictional character Derek lives in and works in, it's not possible in his organization. They're the wrong type of organization. And it's going to mean not just getting the developer, not just getting Derek bought in on this problem and wanting to solve this problem. This means at the top, all the way down, right? At the CI, CEO level, at the uh, board of directors level, at all of the owners level, you're going to have to get that fundamental shift and say, listen, that's going to, that means we got to take a core change of business. And that just for a lot of companies that that's not feasible, right? What you need to do is, is find a good partner who wants to take that on, who that is their core skill set, right? They are a software development company. Um, they are uh, a company who who goes in and, and finds developers and brings them in and contracts them in and, and runs projects, right? Uh, consultancy. Maybe you need a consultancy or maybe you need to look for an off-the-shelf thing or maybe you just need to send that idea off to um, somebody else to work on it because that organization is just a, a, a bad fit, Right? Not not meaning that we're picking on Derek or that we're picking on Amy in the last example, but sometimes when we're talking to software developers, when we're talking about the business of software development, we're getting answers that don't make sense to us because in our minds, it's easy. In our minds, 80 hours means 80 hours. It means two weeks of duration. It means done means done. 80 hours and then it's done. That means fully shipped out and in production and my end users can use it. Sometimes not possible means it's just not possible for us. It's just not possible with me and my experience. It's just not possible for our organization, our group with the tools and the uh, limited resources that we have. So the whole point of this entire episode is clarification, right? You need to clarify what it is that we're talking about. When people say 80 hours to complete, or it, it is complete, or it's not complete, what does that mean? What does that mean to them, and what does that mean to you? When people say that's not possible, or it is possible, what does it mean to them? What does it mean to you? What about the not possible? What about the artifact, or the project, or the experience is not possible, right? Maybe maybe a lot of it is, maybe just, just one piece that's not, right? Um, Food for thought. Uh, a couple more that I want to share is when developers say, I'll get started right away. I'm going to get it started. Yep, you bet it. You betcha. I'm going to get started right now. There's there's a lot of hidden meanings behind that that you need to dive into. I don't have time on this episode. We'll cover it in, a, in another forum. Tell you what, if this is interested to you, um, I'm going to put together a, uh, a list, a complete list and a checklist so that you can compare um, what the developers are, are saying to what they really mean. And so it'll help you when you have conversations. Maybe you're expecting to have a conversation with a software developer. Um, and if you take a look at my little cheat sheet, let me give you some good ideas on maybe how to guide the conversation. So so what we've discussed here today, 80 hours to complete, is that an estimate of the effort or an estimate of the duration? When they say complete, what does complete mean? Not possible or is possible, what does that mean? Um, there's a few more, I'll get started right away. I'm gonna get on that right now. Um, another one is, it's only a five minute change. It's just one line of change, just one line of code, no problem, not a problem, it's super easy. It's just one line of code. What does that really really mean? What does that mean? How about self-healing code? I love this one. I've heard this one a lot. I've used this one a lot. It's self-healing code. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, man, it's a great uh, it's a great experience when you have a developer that tells you this is this problem was resolved due to self-healing code. It's like it's like nanobots in the system that are like you know like the like the uh, little little robots inside there fixing itself. Um, and another another one that I hear daily is we need to do a complete refactor. We need to refactor the crap out of this thing. So I've got some, what do they really mean when they're saying this? On a list that I'm putting together on hellotechpros.com slash manage software development. 
that's a mouthful. Is it manage software development? HelloTechPros.com slash manage software development. Um, how about just HelloTechPros.com slash manage? That's a little better. HelloTechPros.com slash manage. I'm going to put this resource together as well as um, a while back, we had three episodes on how to conduct performance reviews and give performance feedback to your team members. Um, and I've got some other great tips and tricks on how to manage software developers and how to manage software development projects. I'm going to put it all together for you at hellotechpros.com slash management. And until next time, take care.